Okay. Okay. So we are studying chapter twelve. Uh, there are five learning objectives. Okay. So, so the need for standards. Okay. So um, you know it's interesting, right? When you go to all this uh, business, especially those franchise business, uh, you went to the the different uh, locations, right? You feel that you are in the same the same okay. building. All right, let me see that I will. Sure. Let's um, so basically, okay. for example, right, the the standard for McDonald's, right? How they lay out, yeah. how we so have a manufacturing overhead budget. Just scroll down. You should see my box there. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so uh, basically, um, you know how this how they set up the floor, the floor plan, right, for this business. There's a standard, right? Um, and for Costco, right, you go to different cities, you go to the Costco, you know, they kind of have similar standards, right, how they set up things. Uh, one thing they do is they always have a, a person, right, inspecting your ticket, your uh, receipts, right? Um, you know, draw a sm smiley face <laughs> my kids, right? Um, so, the idea is that uh, you may uh, want to maintain the consistency, right? Man maintain the consistency. So you set up certain standards. Standard of cost, this is for the manufacturing companies, right? So they will uh, try their best to, uh, uh, to, get, to obtain the information to approximate the cost of their product, okay? So, we know that the product cost has three components, right? Direct material, direct labor, and, and overhead, right? Uh, so the, basically the idea, the standard cost is they would you know, try their best, right? Have an have a estimate what is the cost it's gonna be, how much it's gonna cost me to produce one unit of that item, okay? So um, you, this is a predetermined unit cost. Okay, just to note that this is the unit cost. So the cost per unit, that's a standard cost. Okay, and uh, so uh, this can be held as a way for performance measurement, right? Because um, what's the actual cost per unit that can be used um, to compare against the standard cost, right? To evaluate whether the manager is doing a good job to keep the cost down, right? Uh, what are the advantages of the standard cost? Okay, so it's a very useful planning and the control tool, right? Um, so, you know, you have a plan, right? You have a plan to do things, okay? Um, so hopefully you guys ha also have a plan, right? When you, you are trying to um, juggling all the different commitments, right? You are working, you are studying, uh, lots of other activities, right? You need to have a plan, right? <laughs> What, what would be the standard schedule, right, for your week, right? What are you gonna do on Monday between eight to nine, right? In the morning, right? So, um, so once you have that planning done, so then you have a better control, right? You have better control over your time. So this standard cost also um, bring the awareness, the cost awareness, right? to the uh, all the other employees right so basically they understand right they understand um you know what is the cost what is the target the goal what's the what's the standard cost right so when everyone is aware right it's beneficial because you know they will they will um have an idea right they will have an idea how much time right as I should spend on this piece of tool, right? So maybe the standard cost saying that, um, you know, for every unit, the direct labor hour is one hour, right? And think about that, <laughs> that worker, right? If he spent two hours, three hours, right? That's really uh, inefficient, right? That's really inefficient. So at least that they know, they know what's the expectation, right? you have to finish a unit in an hour, right? Okay, so, and then uh, you are able to uh, make comparisons, right? 
try to understand it, where this wear is coming from, right? Hopefully you have a, a solution. And then you are able to set up a price, right? So you know $10 is your standard cost and you are trying to make, let's say, uh, a markup of 20%. So you are trying to make $2. So then you know that my selling price can be set as the standard cost, $10 plus the markup, $2, $12, right? So you don't have to wait until you, you, you receive the information of the actual cost, right? And also it's much easier to calculate inventory, right? You have learned in uh, 2100, uh, for the external users, right? When you calculate inventory, the ending inventory and the cost of goods sold, right? There are different methods, right? Uh, we take the average, right? First in, first out, okay? Um, but in this, in this case, we are in the managerial accounting, it's for internal purpose. So you can approximate these numbers. So in this way, you know the standard cost, let's say $100 per unit, and then I can count my ending inventory. There are 100 units left. So then what's my ending inventory, right? Use the standard cost times the units uh, in the inventory. So it's 100 times 100, 10,000, right? Okay, so you see it makes inventory costing easier. Okay, so these are the advantage only, only this cost, okay? When you set up the cost, you put enough thoughts, right? It's based on reliable information, right? If this number is not accurate, right? Then <laughs> it's probably not an advantage, right? If, you, if your standard cost is too much off, right? So your selling price, if you determine your selling price based on an inaccurate standard cost, so that's not gonna be very, very nice, right? Okay, so, what is the difference between a standard and versus a budget, right? Uh, we have seen both these numbers will be determined, right? Uh, before you receive the actual numbers, okay? So this is like the planning stage, right? At the planning stage, uh, you determine these numbers, okay? So this is not a predetermined cost and it's useful for planning and control. Um, the Standard, as I mentioned, is a per unit amount, okay? What is the standard cost for each unit, okay? And when we prepare the budget report, we have the total amount, right? What's the total amount? What's the total amount of cost for the budget? So one is for per unit, the other one is for the total. Um, standard cost, as I mentioned, Okay, standard cost uh, can be useful, right? Because when you are recording the inventory cost, right, the ending inventory, you can use the standard cost, okay? So how to set up the standard cost? As I mentioned, um, in order to obtain the benefit of standard costing, you need to make sure that uh, those co standard costs set up has to be um, accurate, reliable, right? So basically you need inputs from all the persons have responsibilities for cost and quantities, okay? So these people have the first-hand information about the cost and the quantity, right? You, you need to um, seek their input. Uh, and also, and also this standard cost has to be updated, right? Has to be updated. So um, for example, right, um, since COVID, right, the construction materials has hacked, right? It's very expensive. So then, you know, <laughs> you can't use the, the same standard cost prior to the COVID uh, for today's, right, planning, okay? And this has to be under continuous review, right? Continuous review. The two levels of standard cost, ideal standard, so this is, Basically, when everything is perfect, right? When your environmental factors, they are all favorable, everything is perfect. So you may achieve a certain level, okay? So what's your ideal standard for your mark in this, call, in this class? So, you know, you don't have, what, what would be the uh, perfect operating conditions 
So you don't have a job, right? You can, you can focus all your time on studying this course, okay? Um, uh, Isabella? Sorry, so just to confirm, the ideal standard for like our course would be like an A plus, right? So like if we don't have a job or anything. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the normal standard would be, um, you know, it's a rigorous standard and it's attainable. A plus might not be attainable, right? If you are taking five courses and you have a full-time job, right? So, I mean, it's sure it's an ideal standard, but it may not be attainable, right? It's just because you don't have the time, right, to study. Uh, the normal standard would be maybe if you have a full-time job and you are taking four or five courses, um, maybe the attainable goal is like you get like a, I say B minus or something, right? That's probably a, a pretty good goal, right? Okay. So direct material price standard. So now we're talking about direct materials, right? Because the product cost has the three component, materials, labor, and overhead. So let's talk about the first thing, direct material price standard. So that's the cost the per unit. Again, standard is about the per unit, okay? Of the direct materials should be incurred, okay? So how do we know? Well, the purchasing department, this, this is the department responsible for ordering these raw materials, right? They probably have the best information, right? Because that's their job, right? They, they placing orders on these materials, right? So they probably would have a good idea in terms of, you know, what's the price of those materials, right? Maybe it's fluctuating, but, but they may have a good idea, right? Um, if you know the actual cost, okay? And if it's significantly and permanently different from the best estimate, you better review that standard cost for the materials, right? If it's just temporary, um, temporary uh, difference, right? People say, well, the inflation now we are experiencing is only temporary uh, because of the logistic difficulties due to COVID, right? Other people think maybe it's a permanent, right? Maybe it's just because all this money we are giving out to people for free, right? Um, so, you know, so in that case, what is, is this change in the price? Is this temporary or permanent? If it's a permanent, right? You need to revisit that standard cost for the materials. Okay, you also need to include it, the cost that, uh, for example, receiving, storing, and handling, right? So this is also uh, part of the cost, right? Part of the direct materials cost, because you had to pay for this, right? Right. Okay, so here's one example. Suppose this company uh, produce energy drink, okay? The standard cost for each liter of this drink of the direct materials is $3, okay? It's $3. So let me see, okay. So you can see the breakdown. So basically uh, the materials, direct materials purchase price, net of discount, that's $2.7. The freight, that's 20 cents. Receiving and handling is 10 cents per unit, okay? So together, together, the cost of these materials is $3, $3. Is my voice clear to everyone? Can, okay. So Hussein, yeah. so it must be on your side, okay? It must be on your side. Okay, so, so you can see, you can see uh, not just the purchase price, right? You're also considering all these other transportation handling costs, uh, right? You also need to consider those costs. And so, so here you get a price, so per kilogram, so it's $3, that's the materials. So now let's think about the quantity standard, okay? 
the quantity standard. We just talked about the price standard. What is the quantity standard? So for, to make each unit of the product, how, many, how much materials I need for that production to make one unit of that product, right? Okay, uh, so the unit in the measurement would be, let's say uh, the weight, right? Kilograms, pounds, maybe um, it's based on the um, number, right? The quantity, maybe it's how many pieces, right? So uh, you also need to in consider those waste and the spoilage, okay? Those materials also has to be considered, okay? So here you can see that uh, to make each unit of the product, I need to have materials, 3.5 kilogram. I also consider the waste would be 0.4 kilogram and the, the spoilage would be 0.1 kilogram. Okay, so together, right, in order to make one unit, I need to have to use four kilograms of the direct materials. Okay. So that's your standard quantity for each unit. That's the four kilograms. Your standard price is $3 per kilogram. So what's your standard direct materials cost? So your standard direct materials cost equals your standard price per kilogram times the standard quantity as Q um, in terms of the, uh, the kilograms, okay? So we have $3 for each kilogram times for each liter of the drink you need to have four kilograms of the materials. So therefore, to make one liter energy drink, the standard cost would be three times four equals $12. Okay, is this clear? I will count three. One, two, three, sum up. Okay. Okay, very good. So you can see that the standard price, standard quantity, right? This is all planned, not actual, right? Not actual, this is all planned. Okay, so direct labor price standard. We just talked about the direct materials, right? Now let's talk about the direct labor. So similar ideas, right? What's the price? The price is the rate per hour, right? How much do you pay your laborers per hour? The rate per hour, okay, for direct labor. And also um, this number might be based on the wage, right? The wage and also maybe there are the future rates in the salary, okay? Cost of living adjustment, right? And also employers also pay CPP and a Canadian pension plan, right? And also um, employment insurance, right? This is all payroll cost, right? This is all part of the labor cost, okay? So in this example, suppose the hourly wage rate is $12.50. And then uh, cost of living adjustment, payroll, uh, cost of living adjustment is 25 25 cents per hour, payroll tax, 75 cents per hour, fringe benefit, $1.5 per hour. This would be the company purchase, let's say dental plan, right? Or maybe uh, some other like medical, uh, medical insurance plan, right? And the, the company probably pay a portion of that. So that's this uh, fringe benefits, right? So in together, together, we figured out the standard direct labor hour rate per hour is $15, okay? So we are saying that the standard cost for using labor is $15 per hour, okay? Direct labor quantity standard. So how, 
how long it's going to take a worker to produce one unit, right? So that would be your quantity standard, okay? So this is the time should be required to make one unit of the product under normal operating conditions, okay? And then here, to make a one liter of the energy drink, uh, the production time, the labor time is one hour, sorry, one, one hour and a half. And uh, the workers, they got resting time, right? And the cleaned up time. So that's 0.2 hour. Um, they need to set up the machine maybe, or uh, they need to have some downtime. So that's estimated to be 0.3 dollars. So that's add up for to produce one liter of energy drink. The standard direct labor hour is two direct labor hours. Okay. So now what's the standard direct labor cost? You use standard direct labor rate per hour, the price times the standard um, direct labor quantity. Okay. That's two hours. So to make each liter of the energy drink, we need a two direct labor hours as a standard. And uh, we know that as a standard, each direct labor hours is gonna cost $15. So to produce one liter of the energy drink, the standard direct labor cost is 15 times two, that equals $30 per liter, okay? Okay, so I will count one, two, three. One, two, three, sum up if you understand. Okay, very good. If you don't understand, please ask, okay? If you don't understand, please ask. Okay, so that's my direct labor. So now let's work on this one. Let's work on this question. I see what Santiago. You have a question? Uh, no, I, I I have the answer. Oh, you have the answers. Okay. Can you send it to me uh, directly through the okay. direct message? Okay, thank you, Santiago. Uh, thank you, Rachel. So make sure if you, uh, if you are close to the time marks participation. Um, so let me think, including this one, we still have, including, including this one, we still have three lectures, right? So today and uh, December 2nd and December 7th. So if you are if you are seven points, you still get a chance. If you participate in all the three lectures, including this one, you still get the uh, participation mark, okay? So thank you, Ashley. Do you, do you guys know what's called a free ride? Free ride means you didn't put enough effort. You just go along with others, right? It's a free ride. So I noticed that if I ask a question uh, and people answer, and then many students will know this is the correct answer, they will just follow, right? So, so I think if you gave me the direct message, that's good, right? That's good. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Isabella. Okay, so this question, 
here. So, uh, so I need to calculate for each completed pi, okay? The unit is each pi. And here are the recipe, right? Here are the recipe. So what's the cost, right? What's the standard cost? So two times 2.4, okay? And the 250 milliliters, that's 1.95 and uh, seven cents times 15 plus for the meat and the vegetables, right? These numbers, these numbers are for the recipe, right? But don't forget, they're gonna be waste, right? They're gonna be waste. So you have to include more materials, more meat and the more vegetables, right? Additional 10%, right, for the waste. So therefore, uh, if you use that, times 1.1, okay? Um, so then you get 15.24. So that's the answer I got, okay? Isabella, you have a question? Yeah, just wondering why did you go two times 2.49? I thought we were going per pi. And then if you times it by that, you got two pies. So wouldn't you just go 2.49, not two times 2.49, because you're only making one pi? Yeah, that's not... But here, I don't know, I don't understand this question. The standard quantity is two. Yeah, and but it says per crust is 2.49, so you wouldn't times it by two. You would just go with 2.49. Okay. Because maybe, you're making one pi. Maybe, right? I'm not, maybe I'm not Italian. I don't know how to make a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so do you need a do you need a two crust for to make a pizza or you need only one? You only I need think, one crust. Okay. I think you need two if you're gonna go one for the bottom and one for the top. For pie? Yeah, like covering one that covers it and then one for the bottom. But like no, because you would just need oh, that doesn't make sense though. I'm yeah, so no, it's it's a meat pie. So they use like a pastry crust. So it's made like a apple pie where there's usually a crust at the bottom and then a crust over the top. It's like a chicken pot pie. Okay. Oh, okay. That's my fault then. I was just confused. So, so I'm so sorry. I, I really don't know. But uh, should we use two or one? Do you guys agree on the number? Yeah, it's usually yeah, two. Yeah, I would do two. Okay. If, yeah. if people know how it works, then yeah, I would do two. Okay, I enjoy eating pie, so <laughs> never make a pie. But in this question, they told us the standard quantity is two and the standard cost is 2.49 per crust, right? So that's the standard quantity for making a pie, right? That's two here. Okay, move on. So manufacturing overhead is standard. So for, manu for manufacturing overhead, a standard uh, predetermined overhead rate is used, right? We have a whole chapter to learn about this, right? You know that. Uh, so the predetermined rate, okay? You know how that works, right? You use that budgeted overhead cost divided by, by the expected standard activity index, right? That's a division, if you remember. Um, and then, so the example for this activity index to allocate overhead, remember we talked about machine hours, right? Labor hours, right? Those are kind of very common activity index to, uh, to use uh, for that uh, overhead, right? Overhead uh, um, allocation, right? Okay, so and right, remember ABC, right? ABC. So we are using that calculation, the division. So in this example, the direct labor hour is that activity index. Okay, and we know that uh, for each liter of the drink, uh, the standard is two direct labor hours, right? So, so assume that uh, assume that uh, this company they would uh, normally, okay, normally they can produce 13,200 liters. And how many direct labor hours is gonna need it? So pretty straightforward. 
So the number of liters times two hours per liter. So you get 26,400. This is your total standard direct labor hours, okay? And then you know the cost, right? The budgeted overhead cost has two components, variable, fixed, and total. And you figured out these numbers and you know the, the activity index and you use division, right? You figured out the overhead rate per direct labor hour is $3 for the variable overhead cost and $2 for the fixed overhead cost. Together, uh, the overhead rate is $5 per hour, per direct labor hour, okay? And we know to produce one liter energy drink, you're gonna need two direct labor hours, right? So therefore, the $5 per direct labor hour times two direct labor hours, your overhead rate, okay? Your overhead rate per um, liter is $10, is $10. Um, sorry. So here is overhead rate per, per liter. Per liter of the energy. Okay. So in order to for each liter of the energy drink, you have the overhead cost is ten dollar, right? So what's your total standard cost per unit? Then you just add up all the three materials, labor and my overhead, right? Okay, and uh, so you can, you can have the uh, standard cost prepared for each product, okay? And once you have the actual number, you can determine the variances from this standard, okay? So for example, this will be a standard cost card, right? You know for material, Right, for each liter, you need a, each liter of the energy drink. You need four kilograms direct materials, and each kilogram, okay, each kilogram, uh, the cost is three dollars. So the standard cost for the direct materials is twelve dollars. Right, for direct labor, you need two hours, and each hour is fifteen dollars. So that's thirty dollars for each liter, and the manufacturing overhead is also uh, is $10 each liter. So together uh, to make one liter of energy drink, your standard cost is $52, right? So if I'm the boss of the company, this information tells me that. So for me to, per, to make one liter of that energy drink is gonna cost me $52, okay? So, um, if, if there's any differences, right? The actual numbers, actual quantity versus actual price. So you can use this to identify the variances. How? I'm gonna show you, okay? I'm gonna show you. Okay, so let's see this question. Again, send me a private message, okay? And that will be considered as your participation. Okay. Thank you, Santiago. Thank you, Isabella. Thank you, Torsen. Thank you, Janaya. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Ashley, Darlin, Jimmy, Tammy. Okay, so the answer is C. Um, so I talked about 
the advantage of using standard costs, right? You can do the planning control and you make the calculation of inventory simple and you are able to set up the price, right? Uh, you don't have to wait until the, you receive the actual cost, right? But C is the one we, we didn't talk about. Okay, so analyzing these variances, right? So the whole purpose of having the standard, that's the reason for that is for comparison. Uh, once you have the actual numbers, you compare that to the standard, you want to analyze and report the variance, okay? So, um, uh, again, right, for direct materials, labor and overhead, you should uh, calculate the variance, you should uh, report the variance, and also interpret the variance, okay? So let's take a look at the different variance. So unfavorable variance, right? We are talking about the cost, right? So if the cost is unfavorable, okay, that means I'm paying for a higher price than the standard price, okay? Right? So we are talking about cost, right? So if cost is unfavorable, the difference is unfavorable, that means the cost, the actual cost is higher, right? Than the standard cost. So it could be I'm paying a higher, uh, the actual price is higher than the standard price, or maybe I'm using more materials, right? I'm using more labor. So there's some efficiency issues, right? Okay, so this will make things unfavorable, right? So I'm using more materials, I'm mo using more um, direct labor, right? I'm not being efficient using the materials and using the people, the human capital, right? So this will make my cost higher and uh, this is gonna be unfavorable compared to the standard. So if it's favorable, that's the opposite, right? Either I'm paying less, right, than the standard. So I'm paying less money um, for, uh, than the standard, or, you know, I'm able to use less materials, use less uh, direct labor hours, right? Those will save money for me, right? So that will be favorable, right? So if everything makes sense, I will count one, two, three. One, two, three, sum up. Sorry, Weming, does that does it take into account um, quality at this point? Yes. So if you're paying you're paying more, um, but you're getting a higher quality, it's still unfavorable. Um, so the quantity is that if you use more, right? So let's no, say no, not not the quantity, the quality. Yeah. The quality like, that means you are paying more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's the reason why you are paying more, right? So when you analyze that variance. So we are saying, no, I'm paying more money. So it's unfavorable compared to the standard cost, right? So the next question is you want to analyze that variance. So why, why you are paying more, right? So then you're going to say, well, I'm using a better quantity uh, materials, right? So that will be justified for that, uh, for that higher price. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so you, you all understand what is favorable, what's unfavorable here, okay? So what's the total variance? So material variance plus labor variance plus overhead variance. That's your total variance. For materials variance, it can be caused by price and also quantity, right? Because the calculation of the cost is price times quantity, right? The, the two numbers multiplication. So the variance can only comes from either price or the quantity, right? And for labor variance, um, we are being really nice. We are not saying I'm selling my labor, right? I'm, I'm selling my hours. So we are, we are not using the price variance. We are using a different word, uh, rate variance, okay? Rate variance. It's the same idea, right? How much do you pay per hour? Um, so, and then uh, a quantity variance, okay? So let's take a look at each here, okay? When you, are, when you are dealing with direct materials variance and direct labor variance, okay, I'm gonna say this again. When you are analyzing your direct materials variance, 
and direct labor variance, okay? Basically, you want to tease out the two components. What is the price variance versus what's the quantity variance for the direct materials variance? And you want to tease out what is the um, rate variance versus quantity variance for the direct labor variance. So I'm going to show you how to do that, okay? So I want you to follow this picture when you are solving problems in your exams, in your assignments, okay? So in this picture, okay, on the left side, on your left side, it's a actual cost, actual cost of materials or actual cost of labor, okay? That's your actual cost. How to calculate actual cost? Well, you use actual price times actual quantity. So A, AP times AQ, okay? That's your actual cost. And then on the right side, on the right side, you have the standard cost. So this is SQ times SP, standard quantity times standard price. Okay, is this clear? How you set up these two box? On the left side, you set up actual cost. So that's AQ times AP, okay? Actual quantity times actual price. On the right side, you set up a standard cost, okay? So SQ, standard quantity, times SP, standard price, okay? And most likely these two numbers are not going to be equal, right? These two numbers most likely is not gonna be equal. And in the middle, in the middle, this is very confusing, okay? This is very confusing part. Just pay attention to me, okay? Pay attention to me. I'm gonna teach you a trick. It's gonna help you to, to, uh, to learn better on this, okay? Because I know, based on my experience, student always confused here. In the middle, because I need to tease out that variance. In the middle, you put a box, that's the AQSP. So actual quantity times standard price. Because the student often mixed up, right? Students sometimes use standard quantity times actual price, okay? So that's, this, that's where I want you to really pay attention here. So in the middle, you are going to set up a box. It's the actual quantity times standard price. So this is, I'm going to teach you a trick to remember this, okay? So that's AQSP, right? Actual quantity, standard price. So um, you can stay along with me, okay? <laughs> In front of the screen. Actual quantity, standard price. So AQSP. How can we memorize this AQSP? Do you have any creative, creative ideas to memorize AQSP? I have one, but before I share it with you, I want to hear your idea. How can you memorize AQSP very well so that in exam, you know it's actual quantity times standard price, not a standard quantity times actual price, okay? So how can you remember this AQSP? Anyone? You need to be creative, right? To memorize this, just to be creative. Uh, Isabella? I just sang it in my head like a rap. I know it's okay. super lame, but like it worked for me. Okay, good. If it works for you, that's good. Yeah, anyone else? This is impor important because students sometimes always confused. Is that actual quantity times the standard price or standard quantity times actual price? So I really want <laughs> Reinforce this here so you, you don't do it wrong in the exam, okay? AQSP, how do we remember this? 
So you can say a queen stares at a, pr a prince, right? A queen stares at a prince. So A Q S P. But the one I got here is uh, a queen size the pillow. A queen size the pillow. Okay. Does this make you feel comfortable? A queen size the pillow. A Q S P. Okay. So in your exam, make sure you use actual quantity times standard price. Okay. Does this make sense? Yes. Okay. A queen size the pillow. Okay. A Q S P. Okay, so now let's move on. The difference here, when you compare these two, the middle and the right, okay? And uh, you can see that the uh, price is the same. So it's all standard price. The quantity are different. So it's actual quantity versus a standard quantity. So therefore this one is called quantity variance. The difference you use the middle box minus the right box. You get a quantity variance, okay? And now I'll move on when you compare the left to the middle. So it's actual quantity, right? Actual quantity, but it's actual price versus the standard price. So this is your price variance, okay? This is your price variance. Is this clear? So when we add them up, this is your total direct material or labor variance, okay? Does this make sense? Okay, one, two, three, sum up. Okay, well, thank you. So that's why I spend quite a bit of time talking about the middle box. You can see that the middle box is very critical, right? If you calculate this number wrong, your price variance and the quantity variance will be wrong, okay? So this middle box is very critical. I think you can all figure out the left, the actual, the right, the standard. It's just in the middle. This is the AQSP, a queen-sized pillow, AQSP. So actual quantity times standard price, okay? So this is very important, okay, very, very important. Okay, so now let's take a look at this example, okay? So um, the manufacturer one liter, okay? So you need, um, four liters of the direct material and each liter of the direct materials is three dollars okay so in this case suppose the company produce one thousand liters of the drink you are going to need how many materials because each liter you are going to use four liters of materials so you are going to need 4,000 liters of the direct materials. That's the standard quantity, okay? And the standard cost would be, okay, for each liter, it's cost $3. So that's gonna be 4,000 times three, 12,000. That's your standard cost, okay? And what's the actual usage? The actual usage is supposed to be 4,200 liters of the materials and the actual cost was $13,020. Um, that worked out to be a $3.1 per liter, okay? So now, now think about that picture, right? Think about the box picture. We want to figure out what are the variants, okay? So here on the left side, it's the actual number. Right, it's the actual number. So the actual quantity, the actual liters used is 4,200 liters of direct materials. And the actual price is $3.10 per 
um, per liter of the direct material. And the actual cost is $13,020, okay? And on the right side is the standard cost. Standard uh, quantity is the 4,000 liters of direct materials. And each um, liter of the direct materials cost $3. So your standard price is 12,000. So I use the left minus the right. I have a, oops, I have a 1020. Okay, so actual cost is 1320. Standard cost is 12,000. The difference is 1020. Is this favorable or unfavorable? Unfavorable. Unfavorable, right? Very good. Because your actual cost is higher, right? Than your standard. So it's unfavorable. So now we want to figure it out. So we have a 1020 unfavorable variance. How much of that is the quantity variance? How much of that is a price variance? So I have to have a middle box, right? The middle box tell me which quantity I should use, which price I should use. Come on. I spent a lot of time on this. USB. Yeah, so which quantity you're gonna use? Yeah, and which price? Standard price. Okay, very good. So what's the actual quantity? Can anyone tell me what's the actual quantity? It's 4200. Yeah, 4200, yeah. What is the standard price? $3. Yes, very good. So in the middle box, I'm gonna use the actual quantity. 4,200 times standard price, $3. So that's the 12,600. Now tell me if I use the middle minus the right, what does this give me? Does this give me a quantity variance or price variance? If I use two minus three, does this give me a price variance or a quantity variance? Uh, Santiago? Quantity variance. Quantity variance, very good. So 12,600 minus 12,000, I have 600 variance and it's unfavorable, okay? It's unfavorable because the cost, this cost is higher than the standard. So it's unfavorable. Now I'm going to use one minus two, okay? One minus two, this is gonna give me the price variance. So 13,020 minus 12,600. So I have a 420. Okay, so that's unfavorable. So for, uh, sorry, 420 plus 600, these two numbers together, that's the 1020, the total variance. I'm able to tease out the total variance unfavorable 1020 into two component, the quantity variance, which is 600 unfavorable, and the price variance is 420 unfavorable. Okay. So if this makes sense, I will call one, two, three. One, two, three, sum up. Okay, so for those of you who didn't sum up, do you have any question? I get it now, it just took me a little bit longer to process it. Okay, good. Uh, you are lucky to have me because when I was a student, my professor didn't teach me AQSP, right? I, I, we just have to just try to practice lots of questions until we really got that in our mind. So this is the, the trick that you probably remember 
even five years later, okay? At least I hope so, okay? AQSP. So I'm going to, I'm going to say this every class uh, before, the, uh, before your final exam, okay? So you really remember this and you will do correctly um, in the final exam, okay? Maybe before you sleep every night, you just, you know, repeating it, AQSP, okay? So this is the materials variance, okay? So what causes this variance? Okay, what causes this variance? So um, the price variance, right? The price variance, you're gonna talk about the purchasing department, right? How come we're paying more, right? Why, what happened? The price rise, the lumber price rise because of COVID, inflation, right? And uh, for the quantity variance, material quantity variance. So what happened, maybe you have, um, you know, some machines didn't set up right with a bunch of materials. You may have a new employee who doesn't know what he's doing and therefore made some mistakes. Therefore he wastes a lot of materials, right? So those would be the cause, hey. yeah. Who wants to say something? I think somebody was sneezing. Okay, yeah, that's good. Uh, so let's take a look at this question. What are some of the causes of material variances? Which one? Send me answer, please. Okay, thank you, Anna. So the answer is, thank you, Ashley. The answer is, thank you, everyone. The answer is D, okay? The answer is D. Now, let's try this one, see if you get this right. So once you have an answer, just send to me uh, through the direct message. If you understand that, that picture, that's easy, right? Just follow that picture, right? This is a real test. See if you really understand what I was teaching. I try my best. I spend quite a bit of time on that. So I hope you, got, you all got this right. Now I will be really happy.
see who is the first one uh, got the answer. Oh, thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Megan. Anybody else? So far, I received the two answers. Are you working on this? Thank you, Jimmy. I will give you one more minute. I cannot wait longer. Okay, so I will tell you the answer. Okay, so this is how I would do it. Okay, this is how I would do it. The answer is B, the second, okay? So this is how I, how I would wait. So I want to figure out what's the middle one. The middle one is AQ, actual quantity. What is the actual quantity? What is the actual quantity? Twenty-three thousand one hundred. Thank you. What is the standard price? Six dollars. Six dollars. Okay. So that is my middle one, right? This is my middle one. So if I think about my right one, sorry. Okay. On the right side, this is my standard cost. So what is, what is my standard quantity? What's my standard quantity? Is that the 7,800? Yeah, that's the units, right? That's the units, but I want to know, know the materials. Each unit, you need how many materials? For each unit? Three. Three times three, right? Times three. So this number, if I'm correct, that should be 23,400, okay? And so then my standard price is the same, $6, okay? And the difference between these two is my quantity variance, right? 
quantitative variance variance. So that equals 23, 100 times six minus 23, 400 times six. So that equals negative 1800. Why is negative? What does because, it mean? Because yeah. the standard produced is higher than the actual. Are you happy or you are sad? Well, I guess you're happy because yeah. you came in under budget. Yeah, so that's the F, right? Favorable, right? That's the F. So now you know the answer is B. I don't even have to, I don't even have to do the, the other one, okay? So I know, I just know there's only answer B gave me a, a quantity variance of 1800 favorable, okay? Are we okay with this? Is this hard or easy? If I give you a question like this in the final exams, do you think you can get this right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. So I will move on, okay? So now we, just, we have just done a material variance, right? Let's do a, do a labor variance. Okay, so basically each liter of this energy drink is gonna take two hours of direct labor and each hour is gonna cost $15, okay? And uh, this company produced a thousand liters of the drink. That's gonna need a standard direct labor hours, 2000. Right, because each liter takes two, 1,000 takes 2,000 direct labor hour, and the standard cost would be 2,000 direct labor hours, and each hour take $15. So that would be the stand, standard direct labor cost, $30,000. And the actual labor used is 2,100. The actual cost was 3,180, okay? So now let's work on the boxes, okay? On the left side, actual, right? We know 31080, that number is given, okay? Uh, and then the right side, 30,000, right? We have calculated that. So in the middle, AP, sorry, AQSP, right? AQSP. So uh, AQ, actual amount of hours, that's 2,100, okay? That's the actual amount of labor hours, 2,100. And the SP, the standard price, the rate is $15 per hour. So therefore I get this number in the middle, 31,500, okay? So when I take the difference between two and three, that gives me a quantity variance, just like the materials. So 31,500 minus 30,000, there is a fifth, is higher than standard. So that's the 1,500 unfavorable, okay? Now, when I compare one and two, one minus two, uh, I actually get a negative number. So that's the 420, which is the favorable, okay? Why favorable? You can see that the actual price, the actual rate is only 1480 compared to the standard 15. So what you actually pay, the rate is lower than the standard. Therefore, you have a favorable variance. Okay, so 420. So 420, this is a negative, right? So 1500 minus 420, you get 1080 unfavorable, okay? Because we have done it uh, through the materials, so I just quickly go through this. If this makes sense, one, two, three, sum up. Okay, good. Yeah, if you don't understand, please uh, let me know, okay? Send me email or stay and ask. Okay, we'll keep going. What are the causes for the, uh, for the uh, labor variance, right? Uh, it could be you are paying the workers higher wages than expected, maybe because you don't find, everyone stay at home due to COVID. You just can't find the labor, right? Nobody wants to work because they're free paycheck, right, from the government. So you have to pay a little bit higher, right? 
uh, or maybe uh, you know uh, you are you are deciding to replace the unskilled workers, right? You decide to hire people with skills, right? Um, instead of hire fresh undergrad, right? They are not skilled. I'm going to hire accounting technician, right? They are more experienced. They have more skills. So I had to pay them a little bit more than university students, right? Uh, the quality of errors, that means it's the efficiency, right? How come the workers are not, how come we are using more labor hours, right? To doing the job. It could be the equipment condition. You give them all the all the typewriter, right? So that's gonna take a longer time for them to finish the work, right? So, so those are the ideas, right? Those are the ideas. Maybe it's the, the tools, right? The tools is not at the best condition, right? So therefore they can't perform as as, as a desired level, right? Okay, what about this question? The answer is I see what the answer is D. We're correct. Yeah, the answer is D. Okay. How about this one? Okay, I'll give you one more minute. And you know, you just figure out the middle box, right? And then calculate, just calculate your quantity variance, right? So you know the middle box and the red box, calculate the quantity variance. So one minute, just one more minute, okay? We are close to the uh, end of the class. I hope somebody give me an answer, okay? Before the class is finished. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Ashley. Come on. Thank you, Anna. So we are at 45, okay? So I have to finish at this point. Okay, so uh, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful, um, wonderful day. We will see you back on Thursday. So we are, I hope that we will finish the chapter two, uh, sorry, chapter 12. Okay. And uh, yeah, start it hard, okay? And uh, make sure you know this stuff, okay? It's not that bad, just need a little bit of practice. So Ashley, you are right. Okay, your answer is correct, Ashley. Congratulations.
and uh, Patricia, your answer is also correct. Hussein, yeah, correct. Just need a little bit of time. Good. So the correct answer is B. E. That's the correct answer. Okay. Okay. I'm using my life. I'm using my laptop calculator is giving me a hard time. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So class is dismissed. Okay. If you have a question, please stay. Uh, otherwise, have a good evening. Okay. See you back on Thursday.